Eantra teaches practical robotics and engineering skills through its competition themes. This year's themes were drawn from the domain of Industry 4.0 problems. Since COVID lockdown made it difficult to distribute hardware, Eantra made COVID-friendly themes through its use of open source simulation technology. We outlined the problem along with an objective formula for grading a finished solution. Students were taught all the skills required through project-based learning in competition mode over a period of six months. Teams uploaded a video of their final run along with an account of their experiences in reaching the goal. At the finals, the students faced a viva by an IIT Bombay faculty jury. So I'd like to introduce our jury today. We now highlight the stages of the competition and detail the skills learned at each stage. So in this theme, there were 472 teams involved. So the aim of this theme was to develop a simulator software stack for a package delivery drone. So the simulator we used was Gazebo. Teams had to learn and implement concepts in control systems, image processing, path planning, and scheduling. They had to perform deliveries and returns of various parcels from a delivery depot, essentially. They had to maximize their earnings within a limited span of time. As much as you can, the more you deliver, the more you earn. They had to develop from scratch. So all they had is the is a quadcopter model with just the motors running. They had to develop the attitude and position controllers of a quadcopter. The environment was a cityscape, uh, which was consisted of buildings. It was a total of one square kilometer in size. And we composed this from models which are freely available on the internet. We just composed them and optimized them for gazebo, basically by cleaning up the meshes, merging them, and texture baking into like one large texture to make it suitable for gazebo. The UAV in fact was uh, part of an effort which was developed in the last internship. These were the packages and this was the landing area which the drone had to find on a building and just land there. Yantra for us was like a thriller movie filled with both ups and downs but in the end we have gained a lot of knowledge related to drones and its navigation. What precision measure you have taken so that the landing was very perfect? Whether there is not enough vibration, when you are throwing the goose there is a weight variation because you are lifting and then you are releasing. I saw that the goods was just thrown. Yes, maybe your spatial location is perfect but how you ensure from which feedback parameter you ensured that there was no vibration, no jerking. How did you measure? In the, the simulator, did it make uh, much of a difference at what tilt angle you dropped package? Would it uh, simulate the bouncing of the package or would it just you know fall and go punch flat on the uh, surface? Did you have to take any precautions in uh, angling your drone when you actually drop the package? Let's say there is a uh, wind. Uh, comes from a side and okay. if you have to go down vertically then it will your your drone will be tilted one way while trying, trying to do so the camera is looking down if you have a wind which is going across wind your your drone will have to tilt in order to you know lean into the wind even to yeah. hover right yes sir. so when it leans into the wind to hover the camera will not be looking at the parcel, it will be looking elsewhere right so this is a subtle question when the drone is uh, coming down and you're drone is tilted for example it could be tilted 10 degrees 20 degrees depending upon how how the wind speed is the image you are detecting it is tilted image and from there you are extracting the coordinates how you are extracting it well uh, whether you are taking the feedback that the drone is tilted or from the image only you are getting that the image is tilted how you are getting it using the current attitude of the drone that is a roll pitch and yaw we apply a rotational transformation to the image that we obtain so that it's actually connected to actual uh, x y and z frame that is all perpendicular frame the frame is not okay. rotated we apply transforms to make it uh, as it okay. is in the world coordinates how did you measure your precision while you are delivering your goods because i have seen at least twice there was a cross mark red cross mark and out of let's see eight deliveries at least twice I have seen, you did not drop your box exactly in the middle. At some point, it was close to the boundary of the uh, black circle. One point I saw that it is outside 
uh, far from the crossing point so, so why it happened and what did you uh, do to mitigate this problem just before releasing the box yes, isn't your responsibility to carefully watch take the feedback and adjust take the feedback and adjust finally if you are very close to the surface and if you are right at the point then you deliver i mean uh, if i was there i should have done that it is quite uh, significant in taking the turn uh, is it a correct behavior because if the vehicle is going and uh, if it just crosses to the 10 10 meter per second you are suddenly stopping it and reversing it so that uh, velocity gets decreases is it a correct correct way because you could have controlled it in a way in which it is over damped system where it uh, it slightly and like like we press the brake in our vehicle don't it be like that yes sir it should be like that because uh, if you if you have seen the real drone uh, uh, yes, and if you control it like that uh, it would be a scary thing oh uh, yes sir you are probably doing uh, things in simulation that is great but uh, you should also take care how it we, it will behave in the actual field because if we, if we would control in this way that would be a scary when you rotate the drone you probably uh, using the differential uh, speeds of the two motors or the counter rotatory motors right so in no. i guess the drone works in that way only right maybe when you are rotating uh, you are changing the differential motors and because of that you are getting the twitch in the pitch and roll is is it i am getting correctly at last the behavior was on each axis you have the twitch not only on the yaw axis it was like cascading all the axes is it correct can you tell me what would happen if the wind was there and your drone was twitching this much will you able to control the position on the marker or you will not be able to control it we'll have to tilt into the wind in order to overcome the wind this is the first year in which we have gone international so we opened the registration to only a small number of countries to see what happens so we opened it because we had some connections in namibia in africa namibia uh, bhutan nepal bangladesh and a few countries in southeast asia so we got registrations from laos cambodia and one other place i am delighted to say that this team from bangladesh has come to the finals in the very first year that bangladesh has participated and uh, you've done your country proud and i think it's quite an achievement to have reached the finals of yantra our uh, code actually runs on a state machine uh, which uh, takes all the navigation steps all the things that's supposed to do take off uh, land and cross uh, and cross so go to a uh, uh, marker by cruising and it puts it in a uh, automated loop there is three state machines nested in one which enables us to control what we want to do like if we want to go to the marker uh, for delivery or we want to take the uh, drone uh, to pick the package and return to, uh, to the home we can do so all this uh, the state machine runs on the uh, navigation controller waypoint controller which actually uh, has all those uh, functions written that control the basic uh, drone functions the navigation controller sends the position controller that we have it sends us the waypoints that it has to go to So now in the position controller we have where we want to go now we can apply a velocity to get there that's what the position controller does it gives us a velocity that we need to apply to the drone this goes on to our velocity controller the velocity controller makes sure that the, that the drone tilts in such a way that it can achieve that velocity so it sends that tilt information to our attitude controller and that applies force to the actuators it spins the motors and achieves that tilt in that direction enabling the drone to move in constant velocity towards that position that we want to get to real drones in which we also use we implement that and that becomes more of realistic so i curious to know about your learnings in the phase why did you use the position controller as well as the velocity controller and number 2 uh, so uh, in one case i have seen that you have descend down to pick the package but you were not able to pick it up would there be any better method you could have a feedback or you could have something you have thought about that yes one thing we thought about it was using the camera to actually uh, detect the qr that we won't stick uh, in the task but that wasn't implemented due to lack of time and we actually came up with the solution quite afterwards uh, when we saw that as the speed increased uh, in task 6 uh, to do the task picking uh, the drone behaved much more erratically and would lose control even would do a backflip at one point this could be your uh, i guess the improvement Uh, the improvement section where you could have do those robustness because in the real life uh, you may pick some at some point of time you may not pick at some point of time but 
you always have to pick because that is much of the accuracy it is the team which is most important you don't just take your friends because they are your friends right you got to pick the right skill set and we had students who've taken part in the first year and they've not come to the final second year they've started learn learning how to build a team and by the third year they've learned how to build a team and they come to the final and do pretty well this way they have kind of experientially learned how important it is to have a team to which you can you know divide the work up and you should share the same persistence towards your goals first year second year students who really not studied a lot of this theory right there's a lot of advanced ml image processing being done here controller design and without necessarily covering all the theory linearly from you know first year all the way to like jumping a pool and you know learning to do things on their own so this is actually quite inspiring and you know should uh, probably cause us to rethink the way we teach uh, engineering in general right there's probably no need to go into so much theory up front but give them more hands on exercises and let them realize some of the issues and then reinforce some of the theory later so it, it's actually very interesting to see like a lot of mistakes uh, were developed a lot of trial and error jugaad was done which was quite interesting we've been working with school students and this way of engaging with them totally transforming their attitude to physics they said that previously it was just a textbook now it's become a manual for life and that's quite mind blowing you know so it's like harry potter reborn where your textbooks have magic spells with which you can make exciting stuff happen in real life that's the kind of spirit our undergraduates can have they'll be doing some really cool stuff previous cases we had hardware so there it was easy to understand uh, you know where the students uh, made it work where it failed because you could see the control system actually working um so this time I was a little uh, unsure how you would see you know everything in software how would they really be able to will they really have challenges in control design and if there are challenges will they be able to figure out something innovative and i was pleasantly surprised especially this last team which did this game scheduling now it's something you don't even typically teach in courses in the first courses but then they came across this problem and then they try to solve this still i think a nice step to do everything in software and this you could do with you know first year and second years that's quite uh, amazing and i think this may be like a two step process where you do things in software then you get your uh, you know theoretical aspects cleaned up a little bit then you go to hardware you change you face new type of problems that are ready for it by that time that's a really good uh, platform to find how to work with real life problems it's not just about gazebo or it's not just about the drones people uh, like as engineering students and otherwise in, in life so we will come up across any interesting problems may or may not have to do anything with the control systems or the drones or anything the skill that you are able to use whatever is available to solve the problem that will get take you a long way and that's what i believe they must have learned few things they must not have learned few more things that they could have learned when they have the physical drone in their hand but that could be a great start uh, from here on because i remember my times when we were on the first years uh, first uh, semesters when we got to engage about those small uh, ground based robots but that that actually help us in uh, gaining the momentum you need a start where you can accelerate and because what the learning is in my opinion is when you get starting enjoying it you would definitely go ahead with the other stuffs because Uh, maybe today few of the uh, teams must have uh, learned about few algorithms in which they can cost optimize and they can earn four a few more points but from there on they can take these things forward and they can uh, ex- actually uh, implement those things because not only on uh, i would say uh, just on that learning side because this this uh, complete domain has a lot of potential and uh, and there are lot of new jobs are coming uh, as you said uh, in the earlier is that uh, previous jobs are going the new jobs are coming and this particular industries will have more more of the jobs and you could also go and uh, maybe start their own startups uh, maybe that could be a initial points here uh, initial phase of their life there where they have learned few of the skills they'll add to, on top of it i would uh, communicate them that this is this is the starting point where on top of that they could build more skills on it so that is the story of a theme in the e-antra robotics competition EYRC 2020-21 featuring industry 4.0 themes 
we try to fit the highlights of four intense hours of finals interaction into a 20 minute video to give you a taste of what goes on in learning with the yantra we particularly thank our jury members for sharing with us their valuable insights into the thought processes that make for great engineering it's truly an engineering masterclass so till next year's competition god bless and jai hind